safely as possible. Yesterday, on a hot summer evening, we saw many branches within government come together efficiently and effectively as they welcomed our new arrivals. I was overcome with pride in our armed forces as the large air carrier pulled into the gate with its crew and passengers. The logistics and the length of the flight were extraordinarily challenging, and they performed exceptionally. I was equally impressed with how quickly our immigration and public health officials mobilized to get them landed and screened. And I also want to thank the Greater Toronto Airport Authority for their professionalism and support. Along with Minister Mary Monsef, a refugee from Afghanistan herself, we did our best to convey the overwhelming support and gratitude that Canadians feel to the first group of newcomers to be welcomed under our special immigration program for Afghans. Every single life that came down that ramp is now better for it. Little infants and girls who no longer have to live the nightmare of being under the thumb of the Taliban. An expectant mother who will deliver her child in a safe Canadian hospital and whose child will grow up to enjoy the freedoms we can sometimes take for granted. The first group are now beginning their new life in Canada and we welcome them with open arms. These passengers and any future travelers have all met the eligibility requirements they have taken a PCR test to departure, have been security cleared prior to their arrival, and will observe all of the same health measures required for all other travelers arriving by air in Canada. Applicants must also meet all of the usual admissibility requirements. To protect their privacy and safety, we will not disclose the names of these individuals or where they are being resettled. Ce n'est que le premier vol. D'autres vols arriveront dans les jours et semaines à venir. And I want to be very clear. This is only the beginning, and there are many challenging days ahead of us. We are seized with the urgency of the situation in Afghanistan, and we continue to work around the clock here and overseas to help Afghans who have put themselves at great risk to help Canada. Des équipes opérationnelles sont sur le terrain en Afghanistan pour apporter leur soutien et nous avons des personnels pour aider les clients à surmonter les barrières linguistiques qui pourraient survenir when submitting their applications and required documents. Our focus is on supporting those who have had a significant and enduring relationship with the government of Canada in Afghanistan and their families. And to recap, those eligible for this program include, but are not limited to, interpreters who worked with the Canadian forces during the military mission, locally engaged staff currently or previously employed at the Canadian Embassy, as well as their families. We're moving this process efficiently to get them to safety as quickly as possible. I want to emphasize again that operational security and the safety of the Afghans and all Canadian staff are our paramount concern. Over the course of this operation, we will not be able to share the details of our work on the ground, lest it give any advantage to those who would hurt the people we are seeking to help. We will rely heavily on the guidance of our armed forces in this, and we will share what we can when it's safe to do so. Comme vous pouvez le comprendre, la situation sécuritaire As you can understand, the security situation on the ground is very volatile, so we can't talk about the arrival of flights or the number of Afghans who have arrived in Canada. I know there is a lot of interest in the next steps for the refugees who have arrived, the people who are hosting them, and where they are going. The individuals are arriving under the Government Assisted Refugees Program and they will be fully supported by the Government of Canada for one year, including income supports. Service provider organizations across Canada have been preparing to welcome them. Every year, these frontline organizations help thousands of refugees begin the journey to successful integration, and we know that these arrivals will be no different. 
Ces organismes aideront ces personnes réfugiées. These organizations will help these refugees find permanent housing, provide information about life in Canada, and connect them to settlement services such as language training. They're being matched with communities where there are already settlement supports in place, with consideration given to whether they have family members in Canada, as well as the availability of schooling, housing, employment, and language training. I want to recognize the significant contributions of these brave Afghans who have provided support to the government of Canada, and I know they will continue to make great contributions to our country. I would like to thank again my colleagues, Ministers Sejan Garneau and all of the staff at Global Affairs Canada, the Department of National Defence, the Public Health Agency of Canada, Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, the Canada Border Services Agency and the Canadian Armed Forces members who are continuing to work tirelessly to make this operation a success. I'd also like to thank the many members of Parliament that we've heard from in recent weeks, as well as the many advocacy groups, both Afghan advocacy groups as well as the veteran advocacy groups, who have helped support this operation to assemble the list of those who have supported us in Afghanistan. Thank you. You've made the challenges of working from decade-old files a little easier to navigate. The outpouring of support, particularly from our veteran community, has been truly remarkable. But we know there is still much more work to be done. And I know as more families arrive in the weeks ahead that Canadians are up to the task. Our communities will band around them to give them the support that they need to thrive in their new home. For those who are looking at ways to support the cause more directly, you can email Afghani Resettlement at ccislive.ca to connect with Canadian refugee resettlement agencies involved in the effort or contact your local service provider organization to offer words of welcome, clothing, and other donations. More information on this is available on the IRCC website. As we said right from the outset, Canadians will do right by those who did right by us. And today is a good day. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Minister. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. On passe maintenant à la conférence de presse. We will now move to the press conference portion of the event. As always, there will be one question, one follow-up. Comme toujours, une question, une suivi. Uh, and as everyone is on the line, comme tout le monde est en ligne, we will now go to the line. Operator, operator. Thank you. Merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. There will be a brief pause while the participant register for questions. Il y aura un court délai. Vous pouvez retourner à vous enregistrer dans la file d'attente pour la période de questions. Thank you for your patience. Merci de patienter. The first question, la première question est de Glenn McGregor, CTV National News. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Uh, good morning, Minister. Uh, as you know, there is a uh, group of Canadian veterans uh, who had served in Afghanistan who are actively helping uh, the interpreters and other people who supported them when they were in country. Their understanding is that none of those people got out on the flight last night and that it was mostly or possibly all uh, people who were affiliated with the embassy in some way. And uh, even then, were on a plane that was half empty. Uh, I wonder if you could explain why those people were the priority when uh, there will be others around the country who are in um, greater jeopardy than people who are working out of Kabul. Well, uh, the first thing I would like to reiterate is that uh, for reasons that are entirely attributable to operational safety and security, we will not be commenting on uh, the precise number of individuals that arrived um, under which of the uh, eligible pathways under the special immigration program uh, they fall into. Uh, and that is because we just simply do not want to give any advantage to the Taliban or any other um, uh, group that, that might seek to uh, to hurt uh, those individuals that we are trying to bring to Canada, as well as the, uh, the group uh, of Canadian uh, officials, including members of our armed forces who are on the ground, um, doing everything that they can in their power to make this operation a success. And certainly we are leaning uh, heavily on the advice that we're getting from the Department of National Defense, the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, and, and obviously um, that will continue to be uh, 
a principle that we will apply uh, while at the same time uh, being able to provide uh, key updates like the arrival of uh, first Afghan um, refugees who, who did who did arrive last night. I do also want to take a moment, though, as well to emphasize that we are grateful to those veterans who served in uh, in Afghanistan and, and elsewhere in the in the region, uh, because we we appreciate that they have a very vested interest in offering support. Um, we have been reaching out to a number of organizations to take their best advice so that we can weave it into uh, this operation. Um, and in addition to those veteran advocacy groups, um, we feel the groundswell of support among many Canadians who want to step up uh, to to help these Afghan refugees as they arrive. And this is something that we have seen time and time again. From Canada. So um, we will continue to move forward in this way, but obviously uh, keeping in mind that we uh, have to uh, put a considerable weight on the need for operational security. As you know, there are already a number of former interpreters who are here now who started coming to Canada around the time our combat mission was wrapping up about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, they are still confused about whether or not their families, who they believe are, are just as at risk as the families of people who are still there now, whether they will be able to come under this program. Your department referred to something called de facto families, which was confusing. Can you clarify exactly if, if someone is, is an interpreter who came here in 2010 or 2012, still has extended family, not immediate family, cousins, uncles, parents, will they qualify to come to Canada under this program? Well, as I have said on a number of occasions, uh, that the uh, core hallmark of this special immigration program is to be as inclusive as we possibly can be, uh, including in our definition of family, uh, what it consti what constitutes a family member. And so uh, when we say a de facto family member, what we are talking about is an individual who may not necessarily be uh, related uh, by blood, but may be uh, dependent either economically or emotionally on uh, a principal applicant who would either uh, be a locally engaged staff person or a former interpreter as validated by uh, the Department of National Defense as well as Global Affairs Canada. And the reason we're trying to be inclusive is because we believe we have a moral obligation to do right by those Afghans who for many years uh, put themselves into harm's way, put their own lives into jeopardy as uh, we were carrying out military operations during the combat mission, but even uh, subsequent to that, uh, within the last 10 years, uh, continuing to help our diplomatic mission uh, in Kabul. And and that is, that is at the very uh, core of what the special immigration program is about. It is to uh, to demonstrate uh, our moral obligation to 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 really um, reciprocate uh, that that sacrifice that they were prepared to make to help Canada in its mission in Afghanistan. Thanks, Glenn. Hey. On pass by maintenant au prochain question. On va go to the next question. Operator, how about that? Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question, the next question is from Frédéric Xavier Duhaim from Radio Canada. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Je vous demandais euh, le groupe euh, Not I Left Behind euh, dénoncer le. The group Not Left Behind. They stated that the program excludes people who were moved to another country. Why? Donc, euh, comme je vais déjà dire, Answer. As I stated, the principle of this program is to have an inclusive approach, a, compa a compassionate approach for Afghans who had, who had helped us in Afghanistan for years. And the reason for this is because we have a moral obligation. And this obligation is to show that we need to help the Afghans who helped us during missions and even after military missions. We need to help those who helped diplomatic missions in Kabul, and that will be the approach for the duration of this operation. Yesterday was the beginning of the implementation 
completion of this program, and it was a success. Public servants and the armed forces members acted exceptionally, and that will continue. Follow-up question? You say you don't want to comment on specific numbers by flight or by category, but can you tell us about how many people we are expecting for the duration of the program? How many additional refugees? Answer. For security reasons, I cannot give any numbers regarding the Afghans who arrived last night or those who will be arriving in the future. We need to keep this secret for operational reasons and the lives of the Afghans and Team Canada need to be protected. But as I stated, this operation with Minister Sajjan and Garneau, we are hoping that we will be able to welcome thousands of people through this special program. Merci, Frédéric. On passera maintenant aux prochaines questions. Thank you. We'll go to the next question. Operator, Abrata. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question, the next question is from Ashley Burke, CBC News. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Good morning. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, Minister Menachino, advocates say that this program is not as inclusive and, and as flexible as you're saying it is. There are Afghan interpreters in Canada or in third countries like Pakistan who are excluded from your government's new resettlement program. They say their families still in Afghanistan are in danger, and some of them are now booking tickets and planning to return to Afghanistan, and they say put themselves in danger. Also, they their families will qualify for your program. Will you commit to expanding this program to include applicants outside of Afghanistan so they don't have to put themselves in harm's way. Well, with regards to the specific question of how we are helping those targeted minorities uh, who have already been displaced and have left Afghanistan, um, we have already put into place some special programs that have allowed for a pathway uh, for targeted uh, minorities, including Afghan Sikhs and Hindus, uh, to come uh, to Canada. And we are continuing to work very closely uh, with uh, sponsoring communities here uh, to find uh, additional options to, to provide uh, settlement uh, support for them. Um, I would also emphasize that uh, the approach to this program will see uh, literally thousands of Afghans uh, welcomed under it, and we have made it a point of taking a very uh, flexible and broad approach with regards to the definition of family members. Uh, for example, as an, as I explained earlier, uh, to 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 really live up to and adhere uh, to uh, taking an inclusive approach, which is one of the hallmarks of the special immigration program. But I also just want to uh, really underline that these are extraordinarily challenging circumstances. We recognize that the situation in Afghanistan is deteriorating, that we are operating under tighter timelines and under more dangerous conditions. We see that uh, the coalition is withdrawing. Um, and we there is the, the reduced capacity uh, when the combat mission uh, and files that are a decade old. Uh, but, but despite all of that, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because what I saw yesterday was um, really a, a flawless execution uh, by a number of different branches from our armed forces members, the global affairs, uh, my department at IRCC, and many others come together uh, to uh, see those first uh, Afghan refugees arrive in Canada. And we will continue to work uh, very much in concert with one another to ensure that this operation is success, uh, which is uh, uh, really underscored by taking uh, an approach that is inclusive, that is compassionate, and that embraces uh, not only the cooperation within government, government, uh, but right across uh, the country. Uh, this will be a whole of Canada effort. 
I will just note that some of the families we spoke to said that those other pathways you just mentioned, that they wouldn't qualify for them. Their their household incomes aren't high enough. There are too many barriers. They're running out of time. Uh, but that's not my question. My, my second follow-up question is, aside from interpreters who work for the Canadian military, there are also a number of Afghan journalists who work for Canadian media covering the mission. Some have been threatened. Some have gone into hiding. Others that we know of were forced to flee the country last week. Will the fixers and local journalists who work for the media be included in this new resettlement program? Well, uh, very recently, we just announced a, a new um, pathway for human rights defenders uh, who include among uh, the categories uh, journalists who uh, are serving a, a critically important function by reporting on uh, the events uh, on the ground as they unfold in real time, uh, knowing full well that they too uh, are going to be targeted and have been targeted uh, by the Taliban. And so that uh, pathway is something that we are also exploring as a potential option to provide uh, relief. Uh, we recognize uh, that the situation is very dynamic, that it is deteriorating, and that there are time constraints, which is why it is so important that we uh, continue to be very focused in this work, which means leveraging um, the uh, professionalism and the expertise of our armed forces. Um, the best advice that we're getting from our diplomats on the ground within global affairs, uh, my department, uh, and we have sent some additional resources uh, to, uh, to uh, the region to uh, support um, those Afghans who qualify under this program and, and, and others who are uh, seeking uh, a pathway to protection. All of these branches are coming together are performing uh, exceptional, exceptionally well under uh, incredibly difficult and challenging circumstances. And yesterday was uh, the early and concrete evidence that this operation uh, is delivering uh, early and concrete results. We know that we still have a lot more work ahead of us, uh, but I know that uh, everybody within government, as well as Canadians themselves, are up to the task. Thanks, Ashley. On procède à notre prochaine question. On va now go to our next question. Operator, operator. Thank you. Merci. Once again, please press star 1 if you have a question. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile 1 pour toute question. La prochaine question, the next question is from Nicholas Kuhn from Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Good morning, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so can you tell us how many um, Afghan actually arrived yesterday? And, um, and can you give us an update as to how many requests uh, the, the department actually has received since you launched the program? Well, thanks very much for the question, Nicholas. Um, and uh, I appreciate uh, the uh, the desire to uh, have uh, precise numbers and to uh, know at every uh, stage in, in the operation, uh, how it's unfolding. Uh, I will simply stress again that uh, because we are predominantly concerned with operational security as well as protecting the lives of those Afghans that we are resettling, as well as all of the uh, members of our uh, public service who are uh, performing so admirably under difficult circumstances, uh, we won't be getting into precise numbers. We won't be able to uh, share uh, the details of the, the next stages of this operation. Uh, we are um, endeavoring to provide key updates, and yesterday was an important milestone because we saw uh, the first Afghan refugees arrive on Canadian soil. And I, I have to say, um, you know, there were some very uh, emotional and moving moments as we watched uh, those families uh, disembark the plane, uh, walk the tarmac, and uh, get onto uh, the, their, their shuttle uh, to uh, to begin their next uh, chapter of their lives. I uh, had the chance to speak with a number of families. There was a moment where a young girl um, bent down and um, shined her shoes before she got on to uh, the shuttle. Um, as though she had to make uh, a, a strong first impression uh, to her new home here in, in, in Canada. Um, one can't help be, but be moved by, by those moments. And, and that 
I think just really reflects how committed we are to fulfilling our promise uh, to those Afghans as well as their families who put themselves into harm's way. And so, uh, yes, of course, we will uh, always be prepared to uh, take questions and to shed as much light on the ongoing successes and challenges of this operation. Um, but we also have to make sure uh, that we get it right. And that does mean uh, we have to be um, secure in, in protecting the operational uh, sensitivities around it. Uh, and, and so you cannot, the, the government cannot even reveal how many um, has arrived so far? Um, because, like, for example, in the States last Friday, you know, it's public. Everyone, you know, knows um, 215 um, of, you know, uh, Afghan were actually resettled uh, in the States. Like, uh, so, so that would jeopardize the, the operation? Well, I think what, what we're saying is, is that at the current moment in time, we're not prepared to get into exact numbers of arrivals because we have set out a, a goal of, of, of resettling uh, several thousand under this program, and we don't want to provide any tactical advantage to the Taliban or to others who may uh, try to bring harm to uh, those, those who are remaining in Afghanistan. And, and by getting into too much detail, uh, we're essentially uh, tipping our hand as to how much progress we're making uh, with regards to the operation and who may be left uh, still to, to resettle in Canada. But we will uh, continue to provide key updates with regards to progress, and we uh, still remain very very ambitious uh, in our uh, goal to resettle uh, several thousand uh, under the special immigration program, uh, which is, of course, uh, being carried out by uh, many different branches of government. Thanks, Nicholas. We will now go to our final question. On passe from maintenant à notre question finale. Operator, operator. Thank you. Merci. La dernière question, last question, will be from Mr. Mann from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Your line is open. The votre ligne est ouverte. Good morning, Minister Mendicino. Thanks for this update and thanks for taking our questions. The interpreters who protested on the par on Parliament Hill two days ago, we're actually basically asking that your department to expand this program to include their extended family members, their sisters, their brothers, their parents who are in Afghanistan right now and are in at risk because of the work that they, these interpreters have done or 10 years or more ago for the Canadian government and for Canada. Now, uh, will you commit to expand this program to include these, uh, these family members who don't fall under the definition of de facto family member? according to the IRCC guideline. Thank you very much for the question, Man, and I uh, did see uh, the protest and uh, obviously was uh, very moved by uh, those individuals who, uh, who, who were in Afghanistan, who uh, supported uh, our mission there and uh, who were uh, previously uh, resettled under the, uh, under the, uh, the prior uh, special immigration program. Uh, as I have said uh, throughout, uh, we are going to take an inclusive approach uh, with regards to this program. Um, and that includes with regards to uh, family members. Um, we are prepared to support uh, anyone who wants clarity as to whether or not they may qualify under uh, this program. Uh, my department and other branches remain uh, accessible to uh, those who have questions about uh, their eligibility. Uh, but uh, throughout uh, the principle that we are applying to the special immigration program is that we are uh, trying to uh, put broad parameters around it so that we can uh, help to resettle as many Afghans as we can who fall under uh, those uh, three primary categories that I have outlined, uh, the locally engaged staff who are assisting or who previously assisted our Canadian diplomatic mission, uh, those interpreters, but not just interpreters, uh, others who provided other uh, crucial support that was integral uh, to our military mission, as well as their families. And in each and every one of these categories, uh, we are uh, leaning on the advice that we are getting from the Department of National Defense, as well as Global Affairs Canada, who are best situated uh, to validate uh, those individuals as they come forward. And yesterday, what we saw is the materialization of that effort, uh, seeing those first Afghan refugees uh, come and arrive on a large air carrier, uh, really uh, indescribable to, to see that, that plane uh, pull up, because it's not just a plane. Uh, it's 
it's really a bridge, a bridge of, of protection for those Afghans uh, that that are, arrived yesterday, as well as those that will continue to arrive under this special immigration program. Thanks, Minister. Uh, Ten days ago, when you announced this program, you said that you are expecting to uh, resettle ten. Uh, you said thousands of, of Afghan uh, interpreters and their families and other staff members. Uh, can you be more specific on how many thousands are we talking about? Is it like a couple thousand, few thousand, tens of thousands? And can you give us some clarity on the timeline, how long this program, the execution of this program will take? Well, I think right now we, we are on safe ground in saying that the program will hopefully resettle several thousand uh, Afghans who qualify under one of those uh, three pathways that I have mentioned. And with regards to the timeline, Mon, as I have said throughout uh, and and supported by my colleagues, Ministers Garneau and Sejan and others, um, we want to get this operation done as quickly as possible. We know that the situation in Afghanistan is deteriorating uh, by the hour. And those reports that we continue to get are extremely uh, concerning, which is why uh, we owe such a tremendous debt of gratitude uh, to the members of our armed forces who are performing exceptionally well uh, under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. I had the chance to thank uh, some of them uh, personally yesterday as the plan arrived, along with my colleague, Minister Monsef, who herself is an Afghan refugee. And, and you know, I mean, as, as I shared a little bit earlier, there were more than a few very emotional moments. And so this isn't just going to be a, a whole of government um, operation. Um, this is going to take all Canadians. And what we have seen time and time again is that when um, the world calls on Canada to step up and to provide a safe harbor for the world's most vulnerable. Um, we answer that call, and we are, are continuing to answer that call and to fulfill that promise. And that uh, I saw yesterday uh, with my own eyes uh, on a very sunny uh, and hot evening uh, on a tarmac in Toronto. Uh, but we know that there's still a lot of work uh, to do uh, going forward, and we're going to continue to do that work uh, in cooperation with all levels of government as well as uh, with all Canadians.